Hi, everyone. Welcome to Climb Your Everest Leadership Skills Series. Um, today, we want to talk about social skills. Um, so basically, if you remember, at the very beginning, we had, we had a session on emotional intelligence. And when we talked about emotional intelligence, we talked about different aspects of emotional intelligence. One of the aspects of emotional intelligence was social skills, which when we were talking about it, we didn't get into many details about it. So today, that's the topic we want to uh, focus on, talk about. Um, all right. So let me start by sharing the slides. All right, so let me just minimize all of this. All right. I don't want to do the full screen because the full screen um, would impact other stuff on my computer and I'm not be able to see you guys. So that's why I'm not going to do full screen. Okay, so uh, we kind of talked about briefly about emotional intelligence. What was the definition of emotional intelligence? Is the ability to understand, use, and manage your own emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges, and diffuse conflict. So we talked about self-awareness, we talked about self-regulation, we talked about empathy. Again, when I see you in October again in person, we'll talk more about all of these elements. And we're going to do group activities together to kind of practice all of this. But today we want to kind of focus on social skills. All right. So, and back then I gave you a homework to journal every day. I told, I told you to write about your emotions. So if you forgot about doing that, I want you to write this down right now. Journal every day about your emotions. A lot of times you do something or you show an emotion like sadness, anger, something. And you don't know why I, why, why was I angry? I kind of don't know the reason. I was very emotional, but I'm not very clear what was the reason. So that's when I just want you to do the breathing technique that we talked about. So when you're upset and angry, do 10 deep breath, breath, breaths, like inhale, exhale, like 10 times without showing any yelling or kind of doing anything uh, out there. But then start writing down like write down this happened and this happened and this happened and I just showed this emotion and when you keep record of it then you start seeing patterns and then you get to know yourself better and then also I asked you to show to write down your strength and weaknesses kind of this was under the uh, importance of self-awareness right because you're talking about self-awareness self-regulation so when you know about your weaknesses and when you know about your strength, that's a part of self-awareness, which is a leadership skill. And I think one of the most characteristic of a leader is self-awareness, being able to know yourself. How could you be a leader to other people if you cannot lead yourself, right? So basically, this is leadership, not it's, it's like a leadership skill, like knowing yourself, being self-aware. So if you haven't done this homework, you write it down and do it. Okay, empathy was one element that we talked about. So how can we practice empathy? Put yourself in someone else's position. So when your sister comes to you and she's like, I'm sad and I'm angry, I got a bad grade, my boyfriend broke up with me, this happened, that happened, my, I was cooking and my rice is burnt. So how can you have empathy with that person? Or, or if you're a teacher and you're a student comes like this, I have this problem at home and I have, my mom is sick. How do you put yourself in, uh, how do you feel empathy by putting yourself in their position? Like imagine what if that happens to me or pay attention to the, to their body language. If are they crying, uh, uh, are they yelling? Are they like, what are, what is their body language? Are they angry? Like, are they showing uh, what sort of posture do they have? And that way you can kind of 
be more empathetic towards them and respond to their feelings. So if you see that, and, and if you guys remember when we talked about communication skills and active listening, responding to feelings was a big part of listening. So if you can respond to someone's feeling, it means that you're actually listening to that person. And if you're listening to that person and returning the feeling, you're empathizing, right? So that's some of the stuff we talked about. So what do we mean when you say put yourself in someone else's position? Okay, so listen more, speak less. We have two ears and one mouth. Why? Because we need to listen twice speaking. And we forget that. Sometimes we want to help somebody else, but we talk, 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 talk. We forget listening. So listen more, speak less. Wait to speak. Let the other person talk it out. Let them talk about their emotions, whatever they're feeling, whatever they need to tell you. Acknowledge their experience. So if you don't know how to acknowledge their experience, just repeat it back to them. Sort of, I hear, I hear that you had a very difficult day and you missed the bus and you got sick because you had a bad food. Kind of repeat it back to them. That's acknowledging their experience or responding to their emotion. Remind yourself at all times that everyone has challenges to face right? Sometimes you're in a good mood and the other person, like your sister is not in a good mood or you're in a very bad mood and your sister is in a very good mood. Just reminding yourself that everything is temporary. If you're up or down, it's going to be opposite tomorrow. So kind of accepting that this is how it's going to be. And then let other people be vulnerable, let people open up themselves, be open and share as much as they need to share, right? Sometimes we get defensive. We don't want other people to share a lot of secrets or stories or stuff with us. And, or we don't want them to kind of open up for us because that might mean so many things like, oh, what if she is expecting me to also become vulnerable, right? So, but letting other people to become vulnerable is a very good social skills, right? And it helps you practice empathizing with them. Okay, then the next thing I want to talk about is conflict resolution. So um, we kind of, I think once more we talked about this, but we, uh, the number one thing, and I think the next slides we're going to, definitely dig in and talk about different techniques of conflict resolution. But before we talked about different techniques, um, of course, all the techniques of conflict resolution, let's say you have a conflict uh, disagreement with your boss, with your principal, with your manager, with your parents, with your husband, with, uh, with your wife, with your um, kids, with your uh, neighbors with your aunt uncle whoever right so the conflict resolution the number one thing for it is communication skills like right? learn how uh, and and kind of learning how to communicate your the conflict to them a lot of times we just want to escape no one likes conflict we just want to escape so like learning how to communicate it is number one which we're going to talk about it more and learning how to praise others so it is sometimes it's very difficult for us to praise others. And I think this is a good practice for you. So now we want to play a game. I'm going to ask all of you to praise each other. Okay. So we're going to start with Raju because you practiced this before. So Raju, I want you to praise Eleanor. I know you don't know Eleanor very much. You haven't met her in person, but praise her. Say something um, positive about her. Hi, Eleanor. I'm from Nepal and I like your smile and I like your presentation skill also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good job. So Eleanor, now I want you to praise Harini, even though you guys haven't met yet. Hi, Harini. This is Eleanor. 
I haven't met you, but uh, you you are you look so uh, familiar to me. I don't know uh, what is the reason, but I I like your smile and uh, the way you present uh, means uh, abrupt uh, quickly and uh, answer the questions. I like it. Thank you. Thanks, Elena. Good job. So, Harini, now it is your turn to praise Raju. Oh, okay. Hey, Raju. Uh, I mean, I've, this is the first time I'm meeting you, but um, like when Dr. Safari put you on spot first, you were very supportive when you started praising Eleanor right away, and that was really good. And thank you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I love how supportive you are. <laughs> good, 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 good job, good job. So I, I, it was a little uncomfortable, and you all kind of felt a little shy saying it. But I want you to practice it. Practice it with your parents. That's the easiest. The parents that are right there around you. Just go to them. You know them. You've been with them for years. Tell them something positive. Okay. So get used to praising others and then eventually you become very comfortable and you can praise more okay so that's that okay now the my favorite part of the presentation which is talking about conflict resolution so what is conflict resolution i know you all know about it but let's look at the definition is a way for two or more parties to find a peaceful solution to a disagreement all of us have conflicts all the time, right? It, it happens naturally, normally, between every day, right? But then we don't know enough techniques how to solve them. So we kind of want to talk about different techniques. Okay, so some of the techniques are more cooperative. Some of them are less. Some of the techniques are more assertive. Some of them are less. So these are the five techniques we're going to be talking about. Avoiding, competing, collaborating, accommodating, and compromising, okay? So what do we mean by avoiding? Like, you come to, we, we have me and you, we have a conflict, right? And then I'll just leave. I don't want to talk with you, okay? I just leave. I say, I just leave, you know? I avoid it. Next one is competing, which... I say, no, it is my, I, it has, we have to do it my way. Like my way is the only way, right? So I'm competing with you. And then you're like, no, my way. And I say, no, my way. So that's competing. Next one is accommodating. So whatever you say, I just say yes. Say, sorry, can you, yes. Can you, yes. Because I, I'm, avoid, I'm avoiding again, right? Because I don't want to deal with it. I don't know how to deal with conflict. So I accommodate. So when we are not good at it, we compete, avoid, and accommodate when you are not good at conflict resolution. But there are two other ones, collaborating and compromising, which is kind of, you have some skills, you have some techniques, okay? And it is not like this one is good, that one is bad, you know? It is, it is basically Sometimes we have to avoid and sometimes we have to compete and sometimes we have to accommodate. Like let's say your life is in danger and a dangerous person and comes and asks for something, you are going to accommodate. You're not, you're not going to be saying, okay, let's compromise here, right? You're, you'll be accommodating. So, or, or if somebody is like three times you, they want to start a fight, you avoid it. You avoid the conflict, right? You don't want to get into that. So that makes sense. Sometimes there is a conflict. We avoid and accommodate. Or or then when your little sister comes to you, you always compete, right? Because it's a competition. It's your sister. So these three techniques is like kind of you don't have much skills of conflict resolution, but it is sometimes they are necessary. But compromising and collaboration. Okay, so uh, actually I wanna show you this, no. Uh, oh, that picture that I'm looking for is not here. Okay, that's fine. So let me explain over here. So 
collaborating and compromising. So what do I mean by collaborating? Collaborating is like, do you remember the example, Raju, from the in person? What is the difference between compromising and collaborating? Do you remember from before? Me? Yes. Uh, collaborating means um, uh, listen to the idea of the next person and collab with your own idea. Okay, so I for example, that. I come to you and I say, can we paint this wall blue? And then yeah. you have to paint the wall red, right? Yes, and yes, yes. When if we collaborate, what we do, we are like, okay, I like blue, you're like red, let's mix them up. When you mix red and blue, it becomes purple. So we paint the wall purple, we mm. collaborate, okay? Yes. Compromise is that you want to make the wall red, the wall blue, I want to make it red. You're like, okay, let's do half of it, red, half of it blue. That's compromise, right? We just yes. both of us, yes. we took a step, but it was not a full step. It was a half a step towards each other, right? So compromising is we come closer to each other, but we kind of, we still get a little bit of what we wanted. Collaboration, I'm okay if I don't get what I wanted, but it is very cooperative, right? Which is kind of, okay, um, let's mix this top, let's mix the idea up and come up with a new idea. Okay, does it make sense? Okay, so I want you to think of an example in your life. Did, what did you do? Did you, and I want everybody to share. Did you avoid, compete, accommodate, collaborate, or compromise? Raju, you go first. Uh, falsely, if I don't like that person or I don't want to listen, then I will definitely avoid it. Uh -huh. And more in my life, I think I'm doing compromising. Hmm. Good. That's very good. Okay. Is there a place that you accommodate? Accommodating. Yes. Because this accommodating is like very much by our principal, sir, because he don't want to listen. No, he always said that I want to listen. Yes. So I think in work life, I am doing accommodating, but in my personal life, I'm compromising. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. Uh, thank you. How about you, Eleanor? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, first, I want to speak about compromising. Compromising uh, in any relation, we need to compromise uh, with each other. So uh, that is the thing. And accommodating is uh, uh, you have to add. Um, when you are in an organization or uh, when you are in school or college, you have to accommodate, you have to uh, accept whatever the teacher says. Yes. So that is accommodating. And even with parents, uh, uh, even if we are big, we have to accommodate their thoughts and uh, because they are uh, much and they have much more experience than us. So we have to accommodate their thoughts in our life. And uh, competing is uh, we have to be sportive when we see anything better than us or when we see someone better than us. We have to accept their skills and try to compete with them. We always do like sometimes uh, jealousy come in between but we need to have that sportive spirit. You need to take it sportive and um, make it a challenge to beat them. So, uh, and avoiding is uh, when you have people in your life uh, that uh, don't uh, come with you, compete or collaborate or accommodate, they just uh, um, hate or uh, they have negative feeling about you you just can avoid it rather than uh, feeling yourself sad and low. Mm -hmm. You just avoid it. That That is okay. Mm -hmm. All people are not uh, uh, one. 
Uh, so you just need to avoid them. Okay. So, I mean, that was great. The only thing that I would add to what you said, first of all, I asked for personal example. So I was hoping to say an example of something from your life. But the only thing that I want to add to what you said was the competing is that when the two people, they are very assertive and they don't want to collaborate. They don't want to be cooperative. So they keep saying me, 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 my way, my way, my way, my way. So that's competing. Like when everybody wants to win themselves, not the, as a group. So collaboration, accommodating and compromise has a winning of the group in it a little bit. But competing and avoiding, there is no winning. It's just either fighting or escaping. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Good. So do you have any examples, like specific examples, like about your life? Like when it comes to your mom, do you mostly avoid, compete, compromise, collaborate or accommodate? I mostly collaborate and accommodate. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. good. That's good. Good to know. Okay. How about you, Harini? Uh, yeah, with, uh, with my parents, again, it's like Eleanor said, it's mostly either accommodating or collaborating. It depends on the topic yeah. or whatever we are discussing about. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I've had some people in my life with whom I chose to avoid conflicts because that was the best thing to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I kind of forgot where you are. It is like closer to 10 p.m. So your parents are probably sleeping, right? Yeah, they are asleep already. Oh, okay. So sorry. So I'm not going to ask you too many questions. I don't want to. No, no. They are, they are in the bedroom. So they. Oh, can... okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. So some other strategies. So don't ignore conflict. Don't be scared of conflict. If there is conflict, go at it. Use one of these techniques. You don't have to win or be the best person in solving conflict. No, you can practice and learn. You don't have to win everything. You can just practice, practice, practice. The only way you can become better in conflict resolution is practice, practice, like everything else in life. Clarify what the issue is. Sometimes we start fighting about something else, which is not related at all to the actual conflict. So you need to make sure to clarify, okay, what's the problem? What is, what are we talking about? The color of the wall, right? So you are like, I want to do blue, you want to do red. And then all of a sudden we're talking about neighbors. No, if blue or red, going to talk about the actual problem. Bring involved parties together to talk. So if there are three or four other people that are involved, bring them, invite them. Don't be scared of involving more people. That's okay. The only way we can solve it is by communication and talking. Identify a solution. So you don't have to come up with a solution right away, but you can kind of start brainstorming and looking at, okay, what are... What are our options? What we can do? Like, let's think about what are these solutions? So, and then you can start with one solution. You don't have to have the perfect, the best solution. No, start somewhere, something simple and easy, and then start from there. And five, continue to monitor and follow up on the conflict. So you don't have to solve the conflict in one second, in one sitting. It can take five days. It can take five different meetings. It can take five different sessions. It can take five weeks. That's okay. Be patient. Keep communicating. Keep following up. Keep monitoring. Keep asking questions. Okay? That's that. All right. So, and then we kind of talked about compliments, which, like, how important they are. So, I want you to start practicing giving compliments. But before talking about this and kind of finishing, because the next slide is a reference, I want to know if there is any questions because kind of really quickly talked about conflict resolution and everything. Do you guys have any questions? Stop sharing so I can see you. No? Okay, great. 
So I usually keep the morning sessions for Saturdays very short because there is another session this evening on mental health. So um, again, you're more than uh, welcome to join all of you. And um, uh, the sessions will be recorded and emailed to you. And again, just a reminder to put your schedule October 14, 15, 16. We're going to be for the workshop in person in Nepal. So put that on your schedule. Other than that, have a beautiful Saturday. And I'll see you either Saturday night or next Saturday. Okay? All right. Thank Good you. Good day. Bye. 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 Have Bye. a nice day.